We are continuing with verse 4 of Sri Sri Radharasa Sudhaniti. A devotee who constantly practices smadana can gradually attain such a condition. The condition being referred to is anu smadana or constant remembrance. So this 24-7 that Gurudev talks about. So simply by practicing smadana, by, by practicing remembering, remembering Radharani and the feelings, this bhav that she gives us, by constantly practicing this, we can gradually attain a condition where we're always remembering her. Everything else has moved away, and we're completely one-pointed focused on these feelings, on being connected to Radharani. The Gaudiya Vaishnavas practice devotion internally by remembering the transcendental pastimes of Sri Sri Radha Mohan and or Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu internally. Such an important word in this sentence here because it is, it's an internal practice. Externally, Gurudev shows us and teaches us that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we look like or even following the rules when, when he gives initiations, we never, um, he doesn't take any promises. Why? Because it's an internal practice. So this internal remembering, sometimes our external circumstances can help facilitate this internal remembering, certainly, but our true practice, our sadhana as Gaudiya Vaishnavas, is to internally remember these transcendental pastimes. And what do these pastimes give us? They give us these feelings. So really by remembering these transcendental pastimes, we are trying to, or we're putting ourselves in these feelings of the pastimes themselves. And by remembering these pastimes, it's an avenue, it's a channel, it's a way for us to get to being able to connect to these feelings of Radha Mohan and or Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So here, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Manjari. We can connect to these pastimes of Radha Mohan and the Manjari because the Manjari has to be there in order for the pastime to occur. We've talked about that a lot, how necessary the Manjari is, how Radha Mohan need the Manjari for these pastimes to occur. And this is the mercy of Mahaprabhu is that he came down to give us this opportunity to follow this path of of this of the divine servant of of Manjari Bhav. So our practice as Gaudiya Vaishnavas is to follow this path that was laid down by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and internally practice devotion. So always be committed to these loving feelings that he distributed. And one way we can do that is by remembering the transcendental pastimes of Radha Mohan. And externally, by hearing and chanting about these pastimes. And these practices can also help connect us to these internal feelings. I mean, this was another gift of Mahaprabhu. It was a secondary reason for him to come. And it was still a very important reason was to spread um, Harinam Sankirtan. And by engaging in these external practices, it can be a way, a channel, an avenue into these internal feelings. But really for the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, for our practice... For our sadhana, it's important that we focus on the internal feelings and not the external practices. The external practices can help us, certainly. Um, Radhe, Radhe. Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt, um, but uh, somehow the voice is very low. I don't know if it's only for me, 
but I hardly can understand you. Is this better now? Much better. Thank you so okay, much. Okay. Okay. Thank you for letting me know. Well. I'll just hold it. No problem. <laughs> okay. Thank you, my dear. Um, so these external practices are are so important in, in our practice, but it's not necessarily the practice itself. It's the way that we engage in the practice. And so for us, we're not necessarily focused on chanting a certain number of rounds. What we want to focus on, what our practice is, is to cultivate these feelings while we're doing our practice. And so maybe, you know, it's, it's, for us doing one round that's full of feelings is maybe a stronger practice than doing 15 rounds like a robot mechanically just to make it ha- just to you know check the box of chanting this day so connecting internally to these feelings of these transcendental pastimes of Radha Mohan and the Manjari through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu thus At the time of death, they, the devotee, may be able to enter into the Lord's eternal pastimes. This is the highest perfection of life. Nor Lord Brahma, the speaker of the Vedas, who sits on a lotus flower, nor the five-headed Lord Shiva who speaks the opulent Tantra scriptures, nor Sukadev, the speaker of the Srimad Bhagavat, nor Sri Narada, Bhishma, the gods, human beings, or the wise men can easily attain the Supreme Lord, Lord Hari, within their meditations. But listen, how amazing, on the head of that son of Nanda, who shines like a fresh rain cloud, one can find the foot dust of Sri Radhika, which is like a magic herb. So as we've previously discussed in the verse before this and a little bit in this verse, there's all these very, um, I mean, there's these, all these personalities, Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, all of these gods, goddesses, Lakshmi, we referred to, um, in all, in different forms, human beings, wise men, none of them are able to attain, can easily attain the Supreme Lord, within their meditations. However, on the head of that son of Nanda, one can find the foot dust of Sri Radhika. So it's not possible for any of these personalities to attain Lord Hari, yet he bows before and is the devotee, the servant of Radharani in Vrindavan. Hari sells himself to her love and totally submits himself to her. And so here we can see again, this is the the mercy of Mahaprabhu. This is where we've taken God, Krishna, the, the object, and turned, he's turned himself into the subject and put Radharani in the position of the object. So instead of focusing on Krishna, on this supreme person, he's decided to become the subject, be the one that is concentrating, putting his focus on a different avenue. And this avenue is Radharani. Amazing. God himself totally submits himself to her. The dust from Radha's lotus feet, is full of unlimited power 
What is this unlimited power? It's the power of love. So, Utoka Recovery Day, the still mic problem is going on. Our voice is clear or not? I think it's quite clear. It is quite clear, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you. it's better. We can hear all. Oh, thank you. Okay. The dust from Radha's lotus feet is full of unlimited power. And this power is the power of love. It's the highest power. It's capable of transforming anything and everything. This is the power, this love that Mohan submits himself to. And this is the highest nectar and the highest jewel. Sri Prabhupada Nanda sings, I am so unfortunate because I cannot see or touch the honey like feet of Radha. O、oh, Queen of the Bowers, I constantly remember the dust <laughs> of your feet. Be merciful to me. So, in this prayer, this song, we see some of the, the foundation, the core of this Gaudiya Vaishnava practice.、Um, the first one is humbleness. I'm so unfortunate because I cannot see or touch the honey like feet of Radha. I'm so low. I'm so fallen. Even though I'm so fallen, be merciful to me. And this is the second part the desire, the greed. I constantly remember the dust of your feet. Be merciful to me, please. O、oh, queen of my life, queen of the bowers, I'm so unfortunate because I cannot see your feet. And even though I'm so fallen, please be merciful to me. Praying, crying for Radharani in this greed is the only qualification for us to come into our practice. This greed is our internal devotion. Thus ends verse four. Continuing now. With verse five. Wow, we made it through verse four. Verse five from Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudhaniti. I remember the foot dust of Sri Radhika, which is held on the heads by the very generous gopis of Vraj, who desire the position which, with all its beloved attributes, Is even desired for by Krishna, who wears a crown of peacock feathers and which is a wish yielding Kamadenu cow of rasa for all those who worship it with a festival of loving emotions. I remember the foot dust of Sri Radhika, which is held on the heads by the very generous gopis of Vraj, who desire the position which, with all its beloved attributes, is even desired for by Krishna, who wears. A crown of peacock feathers and which is a wish yielding Kamadenu cow of rasa for all those who worship it with a festival of loving emotions. So perhaps if we move around a couple of Parts of this verse, it can become a bit clearer. I remember the foot dust of Sri Radhika, her foot dust, which is a wish yielding Kama Denu cow of Rasa. So, what is this Kama Denu cow? It's this foot dust of Radharani. 
And what is this foot dust of Radharani? It's her mercy, her bhava, her feelings. It's the mercy, the feeling of love. This feeling is the feeling that we pray to cover our bodies in, to constantly be living in. Yeah, we can make this direct service. But what we can do is, like, this, we meditate, hello, that's good. Rade, Rade. We cannot hear Kishori Didi's voice. No? Now we can hear. Thank you. Yeah, Rade. We, we should check mic. Thank you. So, what I, um, yeah. Now, Mahatma Ji shared about this. Shirimati Radhika's foot dust. We should put on this Shirimati Radhika's foot dust on our body. Yesterday, we discussed also this Shirimati Radhika's lotus feet and her foot dust of her lotus feet. Why this is important? We have to practice, practice meditation in Sadaka Deha and in Siddha Deha. And in Siddha Deha, we can go directly her service in spiritual body. But we are on the way, at least to me, we cannot enter in this Siddha Deha. Then what we can do in Sadaka Deha to meditate her lotus feet? This is Ragnata Dasa Goswami is doing in Radha Kunda. Just one point meditate her lotus feet. Because from her lotus feet, this foot dust come. Now Mahatma Ji said nicely, this foot dust full of Mahababa. Then this Mahababa, we meditate and put on our body. Then this feeling makes our Siddha Deha. Eagerly prayer and waiting the moment, then one day we can get this. That's why this Shrimati Radhika's foot dust is so merciful because we are still in Sadaka Deha, but she can give mercy through by her lotus feet of, foot dust of her lotus feet. This is yesterday we discussed, that's why I want to remember and share it. Shirade. Radhe, good morning. Radhe, good morning. There is one who is distributing this food to us. One person in our life is distributing the food dust of Sri Radhe. Mm -hmm. There is a person who got the food dust. Only those who, who actually have the food dust can distribute this in this world, because the foot dust actually is from Radhika and in the form of Mahaprabhu, she brought it in the world. Yeah. And by the mercy of Gurudev, who is in a direct line to the followers of Mahaprabhu, he can distribute this foot dust. One who has not, cannot distribute, and only by reading, Studying, we will not get. We need it from a person who actually have. You, it's like a virus you get from a person who has the virus. I will not say Corona. No, this is not good. But maybe another one, the virus. I love virus. So maybe like this. <laughs> Equally as contagious. And when who has not, he cannot make infection. So that's and, what I like to add. And we need a close association with the person yeah. who have this virus, right? Right, Kishori. We have to be close to this person. As by Zoom, it's not working. It's uh, really, uh, 
We have to come in contact. <laughs> Don't fear. Without fear. <laughs> yeah. Deep relationship is very important. Mm. And now, so nice. and uh, this separation time, today, Guru Dev is not joining in this uh, visionary Zoom, but, oh, uh, yeah. but uh, at that time, we strongly remember Guru Dev. This is also intense uh, association, right, Gorasunda Prabhu? Especially, yeah. I see Mahatma, then automatically through Mahatma, I feel yeah. the distance of Guru Dev because he's very close with Guru Dev. Okay, this is because your yes. relationship with Guru Dev is so strong. This is, this is the point. Wow. Yes, this is not, if he is not visible in the Zoom, that he is not there. He will be always with us when we together in that uh, reading of these books and so on and so on. That if we make, if we live in it, then Gurudev will be with us because all we know and feel is we get from his lotus feet. Yes, Jananda Maharaj often said to me, how to get association with Gurudev, not physically. But through mm. the seva, we are doing mm. the seva for Guru Dev and Radha Mohan. Then we never leave from Guru Dev. Yeah. And this every day we are gathering and offer my, uh, offer our heart and time and word, everything to this time. This is also associated with Guru Dev. Mm. This is Yananda Maharaj taught us also. Guru Dev also told us this uh, that he is always with his Gurudev. He is with him in his heart. He never feels separation from him, he said. No? And this we desire the same feeling that he will be always with us. Yes, Gurudev says yesterday, I know everything about my disciple because wow. my dis he privately said because wow. My disciple is all my children. Yeah, so nice. That's why I know everything my children don't bother like this. Wow. But because of this, he said also that we have to switch on our the video. <laughs> I remember the foot dust of Sri Radhika, which is a wish-yielding Kama Denu cow of Rasa for all those who worship it with a festival of loving emotions. So what do we do when we, when we worship something? When we worship something, we put all of our focus on it. All of our attention goes there. Our sight goes there. Oftentimes our sound goes there. If there are bells or other sounds associated with the worship, our mind is hopefully fixed there. So when we worship something, we're single pointed focus on the object that we're worshiping. We're totally immersed in this practice. So here it's saying we worship this foot dust of Sri Radhika, so we're constantly thinking about it. It's in our sight, it's in our sound, or it's in our ears, it's in our eyes, it's in all of our senses, with a festival of loving emotion. So living in this bhav of Radharani's mercy, in these loving feelings, the way that we worship the foot dust of Sri Radhika with a festival of loving emotions is to be constantly living in these loving feelings. And this, as Gora reminded us so beautifully, comes from mercy. Mahaprabhu brought these feelings only 500 years ago, and we have a clear, unblocked connection to these feelings through our Gurudev. And just because this pipeline is here, doesn't mean that we're able to be receiving these loving emotions. 
we have to open ourselves to this pipeline. We have to want to step into this powerful flow that can wash us away. Several days, maybe weeks ago, we were relating to a stream, a river in flood, and how powerful this flow can be. You put one foot in it and it can whoosh, wash you away. But you still have to have the desire to go close to the stream, to set your foot in the river. And this desire, with this desire, this pipeline of loving feelings, this river in flood can grab you and sweep you away and immerse you in these loving feelings of Radharani's mercy. This foot dust of Radharani is held on the head of the very generous gopi of Raj and is desired for by Krishna, which we've heard in the last previous or the previous few verses. The title of the commentary of verse 5 is called The Kama Denu Cow of the Perfection of Rasa. The gopis are called Puru Dada or most generous because their love for Mohan is completely free from all desires for personal gratification. This personal gratification is material benefit or enjoyment. They're completely free, as it says in the first page of this book. Gopi Bhav can bring you out of the lusty desires of the material world. Such pure love is rare in this world. The gopis have said goodbye to all mundane, traditional codes of morality and are exclusively engaged in pleasing Mohan at any cost. We hear pastimes about the gopis when Mohan begins to play his flute and the gopis drop everything that they have going on in life. Some are getting dressed and they race out of their houses partially dressed. Some are cooking for their husbands and they leave whatever they have on the stove, not caring if it gets burnt or catches the whole place on fire. They're exclusively engaged, single-pointed focus, this sty bob that our Gora is constantly reminding us about. Exclusively engaged in pleasing Mohan at any cost. There is a meaning to, to us <clears throat> in that what you read. Mm. I see, when I see the life of Jesus at any cost, we can see he is in a eternal relationship. And to please Krishna, his beloved father, he gave up even his material body to please him. And uh, this is the behavior of a gopi. And also he left his foot dust here. And this is really that of a loving gopi. This is the love he left in this world. So in this case, he is preparing us for that what Mahaprabhu brought. Because he showed the right way. And even in the Sadakadeya, it looks like he is in this world, but he is actually in his eternal relationship. So he, it was a very hard because he could see what will happen the next day when they, when he was catched from this people. And uh, that was a very heavy uh, uh, moment to him. But we can see at any cost. So this is also a, a hint for our life. Because if we enter this foot dust and we will give everything up, maybe this world, we are no more very useful for this world. In this uh, 
mundane and traditional codes, if we give up this mundane and traditional codes, that means the world will also neglect us because this world is under control of Mahamaya. And the people who they are living in this illusion all 99% that means uh, we are without uh, this uh, codes how to live and uh, maybe others will look at us if we really enter this and give up everything so our family will uh, not be so much pleased for example or the people around us so for that it's Maybe it's fortunate to live in Vrindavan, in this, even if it is a worldly Vrindavan, or others go to Radakund and live there. If you have this, this stage, the soul consciousness, and in our case, if you are live really in the realization of uh, Manjari, of this feeling. There we give everything up to the pleasure of our Swamini. So that I like to to add to so to give up everything at any cost. Yeah, I love that, Gora. I love that the, at the end, especially when you said to give it up to our Swamini. Mm. To me, when I hear that. We say goodbye to all mundane, traditional codes of morality. Does this mean that we change our clothes and move to a cave in Govardhan where we sit silently for the rest of our lives and chant? No, this is, this is not our line. This is not Gurudev's teachings. What we do is we remove our attachment to this material world. We're no longer caring about the car that we, which car we drive or how we look in the social eye or what the result of this, what the result of our activities might be. Our sole focus is our Swamini's lotus feet. So we're still engaging in these day-to-day activities. We're just not attached to the result of them. Exactly. And how do we do that? We surrender. To me, this at any cost really means to surrender. We surrender Mm. ourselves, our material attachments, our material desires to our Swamini. And in this way, we can become a channel of her love. And it's not something that we're doing we're simply removing all of our desires and making way for her desires, her love to flow through us. Well, yes. Like if I have, even if I have a desire, before I will satisfy this, I will ask, will it make my Swamini happy? Yeah, Jaho. And even if I, in the job, if I like to change my job first, I will ask, will I make my Swamini more happy with this new job? When I cook, I will meditate on that, what to cook. And I will ask, is it what my Swamini likes? And so on. Every day, this is the point to give up. And at any cost, it's also meaning that it's maybe the question for example, there is a desire to go for in the oven, and uh, but there is also another uh, obstacle. Sometimes came, no? There is something, other things to do, and then I have to decide: is it more important to stay, or is it more important to to go? Sometimes this question will come to us. And uh, then, and at any cost. Uh, so sometimes we have to give up something when this question come in our life. They will come many times, and these are the tests 
And to understand also this test, we need to enter in the bath as a manjari to understand, oh, it's a test. I'm loyal, for example, or not? And in which direction I will go? Is it still a call of of uh, of this uh, Mahamaya? Yeah. About it. Jay. Yeah, for this, Gore, I feel that, I mean, to me, this is, this is divine vision when we have this ability to see, like, oh, this is a test. I'm being tested right now. And the answer to this test is, what would Wai Swamini do? Mm. And we, we see this, we see this in the, in the church too. In Christianity, we have the, the phrase, what would Jesus do? I remember as a yeah. kid wearing a WWJD bracelet, you know, a constant reminder. It's like, what would Jesus do? And in both cases, what would my Swamini do? What would Jesus do? We can substitute the same word. It's the same meaning. It's what would love do? What is the way of the highest level of love that I can practice in every situation in my daily life? And this can be challenging for us to see, especially for eyes like mine that are so wrapped and covered in material. And this is, um, for us, we're all so merciful to still have um, Gurudev here in his body, a living guru, because he can help us with this. And we can ask him questions. He's so connected. When you sit down with Gurudev, the first thing he asks are all about material situations, your material situation. He wants to know about your life, your family, your friends, your job, all these material situations, because he has experience with all of these. And when we ask him these questions, in our life, because sometimes we don't have this vision. I'm like, I don't know what direction my Swamini wants to push me. I want to follow her, but I'm not sure which way to go. He will give us a recommendation and it's up to us to follow that recommendation at any cost. And this is surrender. This is the way to open to this foot dust of Radharani to living in these loving feelings. Even if we can't see the answer, maybe we have some kind of material covering still, you know, it's like, Oh, Gurudev, I don't, I don't really want to do that. It's like, this is not giving it up at any cost at any cost is whatever he says we surrender to. Nice. Even if he is heavily, uh, 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 what to say, attacking our, our, uh, ego. Yeah, and if we bring our ego in the corner, that by attacking this, then it the ego is sitting in the corner. Is a there is a, a there is a situation the ego will uh, will play uh, uh, another card, so it will say, "Oh, Gurudev is attacking me so much, and." Uh, I have a traumata and like this. So the ego is sitting there in the corner. Oh, you have to protect me. You have to protect me. <laughs> like this. Yes. Our question then has <laughs> turned from what does my Swamini want to what do I want? <laughs> We've become the enjoyer, the controller. We want to make the decisions and live according to yes, and, our moral and, uh, code. Because of Gurudev is, is, uh, can see inside. And he will, sometimes he will uh, tell us things we don't like to listen. Punishing. <laughs> and this is actually attacking our ego. And then we are, if we fell in the uh, tricks of the ego, we would say, oh, it's Gurudev, make this and that, and it's a traumata. And, but actually, if we watch it right, there is a small ego sitting in the corner by the power of Gurudev. There is no way out of this. It's like a falle. Oh, I don't know in English. Trap. A trap. Yeah, maybe you understand very good. Not me. But <laughs> we have our, our dear Harinam Prashad here is helping. Oh, oh, yes. Thank you. So it's like a trap. And there is Gurudev will bring this ego 
to a position there is no way out. And in that moment, the ego will tell us, oh, what is your my free will? What can I do? This is like a small, what to say, animal we, who we brought in a corner and make this. I have traumata. You have to take care of me. <laughs> I'm your only shelter. <laughs> I think every one of us uh, got this situation one or two times or, or ten times. I don't know. But uh, then we think, oh, he is not so generous to us. He is not so sweet about, he is calling always about love. But to me, he is always punishing like this. But this punishing is the greatest mercy to to catch our ego and, and kick it out. This is his art of work in, in inside us. Lade. Ah, thank you, Shori. Lade, Lade. Yeah. Thank you for inspiring me. It's totally agree. Uh, I also I got very marked. <laughs> <laughs> by good <laughs> punishment, danda, danda, love danda. <laughs> and uh, I feel good, just direct, not from good, this association of good, like uh, our sisters and brothers, is also, I see, expansion of good. If we, I have to check myself, it is uh, now I'm in flow of her lotus feet. Sometimes devotees said to me, but I don't like it. <laughs> but this devotee is also disciple of Gurudev, means Radha Dasi. Radha uses our sisters and brothers to help me. Then I have many experiences like this. This anganess is no meaning to me. Anganess is a good sign. Oh, still I have this animal <laughs> inside my heart. Oh, this is ego sign. Like this. This I can use this anganess to check myself. Oh, here is still ego. Oh, this is a blockage of our swamini to, with me. Then I can go back. This is for yeah. me. Now it works because now I cannot, uh, we cannot ask Guru Dev directly. He's a little bit busy. But at that time, it's good time for us to practice how to see Gurudev in all our circumstances, all our sisters and brothers, all my families. Mm. That's why, so like this, I want to become more humble to get Halota sweet more and more. This is uh, the dust, hard dust, real, yeah. our Sisters and brothers are also good dust of Shurimati Radhika. Mm, beautiful. And what you say is also that even his punishment is, uh, with his punishment, he is showing his love to us. It's not that he is, uh, when he is punishing, that he is leaving his love. No, no, he, he is... Even this punishing is a, what is it, explanation, is a, a showing, he's showing uh, his love through us. If he not show his love, then he will ignore maybe. If you ignore a person, then you have no interest. You don't like to be with this person. You, you ignore it. If parents ignore the children, this is the heaviest thing they can do. If they show they have no interest, this punishing to regulate and even the love, these two are two sides of the love. Ignoring is, uh, is a heavy thing. And so we can understand this as a, as a way to show his love and his interest to every one of us. Then sometimes he will punish. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe. I would like to um, ask um, to all of you, but especially to Mahatma, it touched me uh, very much when you say you are practicing to uh, 
to remove uh, your own desires in order to make way for Radharani's desires to flow. And um, maybe you can share a little bit more if you feel like um, how you actually do that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. She don't hey. Um I for me, my dear, I feel that this is mercy. This all comes this all comes from mercy. And um I have an incredible amount of material desires and I have found here in Vrindavan, um, slowly small pieces of them have been removed. And I just find it's like a switch gets flipped and all of a sudden it's like, oh, this, I was really desiring this and my mind's not really going that direction anymore. And it was by nothing, nothing of my effort, nothing that I did. There was no like, oh, I will do this and then that will lead to that will lead to this result. You know, A leads to B or B leads to C. And and before for me, before coming to Vrindavan, um I was engaged in other types of spiritual practices with the intention of removing certain layers of myself that I was no longer interested in. I was following all of these different types of spiritual practices to try to change this character of my personality or to remove this part of my, you know, character that I didn't like or shift this value or something like that. And all of that for me personally was fruitive. I mean, in some circumstances it would temporarily work and then one week, one month would go by and the same desires would come back up. And here in Vrindavan, I feel like I'm not doing anything. I'm, I'm here and naturally by the mercy of Vrindavan, by the mercy of Radha Mohan, by the mercy of Mahaprabhu through Gurudev, these um, material desires are slowly being scratched and, and scraped away. And so that's a, a really long answer for your question. In in short, I would say nothing am I doing. <laughs> Being in your association, my dear. No, oh, my God, thank you. This is inspiring. And also, I mean, in my case, you stay really long term, but I'm coming and going. So, but I feel really some desires, they are, they stick. And so they are there, just not not permanently. And um, so I I really feel somehow, of course, it would be most wonderful if I could only offer my pure love and heart to Radhika, um, and not these uh, desires. So. I know some um, very advanced devotees, they even um, recommend to offer the the prayers for some deep desires. And Gurudev, he says, never ask for anything material, right? So this is now another point, but it's connected to that. I, I don't know if you feel like sharing something about that or if you rather want to continue with the reading I'm totally fine also <laughs> yeah this is a very deep beautiful question I don't know maybe Gora would have more experience in the on this or I can I can share my feelings but I don't know necessarily that they're rooted in anything other than my personal experience so maybe Gora would have a better <laughs> uh, yeah I can say from my side, Vanana, this is uh, when you ask. I remember uh, three years ago, we uh, uh, we have to change the uh, 
the contract with uh, the the ownership of this temple here. We we make a new foundation. You know maybe something about the uh, the the problems in the Cologne temple. So we uh, we we try to to uh, bring our temple in a, in a nice position that it's everything is is fine. So what we actually did and what is unique in Germany, I would say. We wrote Rata Mohan as the owners in the script. <laughs> Before there was uh, three uh, names of devotees who are uh, in, in uh, I mean, officially the owner of the, the temple of Golokadam. And now, really, the, the, the government. We have to write it in the right way, except that the ideal owners of these temples are Radha Madanmo. It's in a German uh, official scripture. It's a unique thing. But for us, it was such a great, satisfying moment to realize that actually they are the owner of the temple. And they make such a big difference. And I remember when Gurudev was here, he told uh, the, the leader of this company also, because there was many problems she had and uh, all this, you know, to run a company, it's not easy to deal with the people, to, to make some income, to make no minus. It's a headache. And Gurudev said to her, from now on, this is my company. And she was shocked. What is that meaning? My company? No, I have to give up my company? I cannot give up my company. <laughs> that means to offer everything what is uh, meaningful to, to you to Swamini's and Gurudev's lotus feet and not to feel like the owner. No, you maybe you run a nice car. I know, Vandana, you have now such a beautiful car. But this is not a problem. But in that moment, you think it's your car. You have a, what is it, Rati attachment, or what is it in English, to the car, because you think it's your car. And you have a fear that someone will steal it or like this. But in that moment, you make the car to the ownership of Radhika inside your feeling that you feel, oh, I'm, I got it by the mercy of Radhika. And actually, it is Radhika's car. Then you are more free from this. This is what is. I, I know our uh, Man Mohan, he has also a, a beautiful. Uh, red car, and he offered it and, and called it Seva car. His, his car name uh, is, uh, he has a name, it's Seva car. <laughs> and whenever there is opportunity, when there are devotees coming, maybe last year from Japan or from other places, no? then uh, he is always trying to, to pick them up on the airport with his seva car because he is so, this is his service. And so we can bring everything, also material things, under the control of our Swami. So then we are more free because if we think I am the doer, it is my and all belongs to me, that is a burden. And it's no need to, to carry this burden. We can say easily, it is uh, Swamini's, all belongs to Swamini. I also have a lot of things around me. And if I think it's my, then it's a burden. But when I can bring it somehow in a service to our Swamini and think it's almost given, it's all given by her mercy, I got it by her mercy and by Gurudev's mercy. You all know this. When I start this business with the houses here, I have empty pocket. There was nothing, but I got it 
And Gurudev said, yes, do, buy. Right? No, this is less than 10 years ago and everything works nicely. So I offered it, I tried to offer it to his lotus feet and I said, okay, if I can do something with this, I will do. And then it's more easy and it's not a burden in that case. And when we leave this body, still it will be not a burden that we have attachment to the matter. Because we know it it's, it's, it came by the mercy of Swamini. Everything I get in this life is a mercy. And uh, so I can leave it because it's belonged to her. So what? There is no burden. This is uh, what I can uh, share with you. I'm, I mean, maybe it's useful or not. I don't know, Vandana. <laughs> maybe someone else has a, a better example. Yeah, I think that's that's a beautiful. I feel that's a beautiful example, Gora. And I just wanted to add that it's a practice. This is a practice for us. Practice means not perfect. So we're constantly. We're none of us are perfect. This is why we we are always practicing. We fall and we get back up. We fall and we get back up. This is why Guru Dave is so compassionate. Why Radharani is the embodiment of compassion, because she is willing to scoop us back up, even though like, I'm still falling, I'm still falling, I'm still falling. And so um, just when we have situations that come up for ourselves, um, perhaps, and we're thinking afterwards, like, oh, I wasn't that I wasn't that loving, that maybe wasn't the the mood of my Swamini, or I really chased after this material desire, um, and I, I wish I wouldn't have done that, you know, when this thinking comes in, it's like we can we can be we can come closer to Swamini in those moments by feeling her bob and her bob shifts. As we know, there's oceans of waves of 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 bob. And so she's Perhaps in that moment, her feeling is compassion. And so by holding ourselves in this compassion, we remember that life is a practice and this material world is very tricky. Mohan is very, very tricky. And so, you know, thinking that we can, can outsmart him and get the best of every situation is, is certainly, you know, for, for us as, as ordinary souls is, um, is not possible. And so in those times, holding ourselves in that, that mood of Radharani, that compassionate mood, um, perhaps may help offer, bring us back into those, into those feelings closely to her, to her lotus feet. And I also wanted to add too, when we were talking about, about Gurudev and being, you know, being heavy with us and purifying our ego, um, Gurudev is working on all of us all the time. And so just because we're not physically sitting in his room in Vrindavan doesn't mean that we're not also being presented with opportunities to purify ourselves, to purify our ego in every moment. Gurudev, as um, Gurudev has said, he sees his guru in everyone. This means that we can also see our Gurudev in every interaction, in every soul that we come in contact with. Perhaps that soul has something to teach us. Perhaps it's an, an ego smashing. Perhaps it's a boost. Uh, perhaps it's a boost of compassion. But if we're if we're open to seeing every every soul, every interaction as our Gurudev in a different form, we're open to this idea of Prabhu, as they say here in Vrindavan, this teacher. Prabhu, Prabhu, because every every opportunity is an opportunity to learn, then we don't have to be in close physical proximity for Gurudev to be um, working on these kind of purifying ego smashing practices. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Da -da -da -da. Um, I wanted to ask a question to the elder devotees, like for the understanding. Um, as a manjari in the spiritual world, like 
do we exactly feel what Radha Rani also feels when we are in service? And because like we, we part uh, not participate, but we are in the most intimate um, pastimes there. And yeah, for my understanding, it was, that's why it's like the highest because we actually feel what she feels in being so connected with her. And yeah, I just wanted to ask for clarification. Thank you. I know, Prashad. I think there was from the last question, one and I had also, I, I like to, first I like to, uh, Ask and then we can answer maybe. Vandana, there was something left from the, from you. You was not. Yeah. Um, so it was coming up in me after your nice sharing. Um, Bora Sundara, thanks very much. I sometimes have problem to unmute <laughs> and now it more appearing like how to to stay with these deep desires and transform it into a deep trust that whatever happens if it is granted or not it's it's all fine it it is somehow um her desire their desire and it's uh, and not to make any dependency if it will be fulfilled or not mm. So, um, but to come into a trust. So this is, for me, I think, something that is, I like to much more uh, cultivate and develop that, yeah, to come to this point and whatever happens. <laughs> yeah, so beautiful. And uh, <clears throat> the connection is the love. We uh, We cultivate love in relationship to our Swamini. And then if we start with love, <clears throat> it's more easy to us to uh, to give everything to her lotus feet. Because we love her so much and everything what what is uh, we can bring together with her in connection to her. It's so satisfying ourselves. It's, uh, before it, we got satisfied by material things. But now in, in a loving relationship to Swamini, we can bring everything to her lotus feet. And that makes us so satisfying. If we can feel, oh, we make, a, we make her little happy. We have to feel that that what we did make her a little happy. I mean, this is a, a, a great feeling inside us. And for sure, we have to to be in the face, in the fully face, that there is a person, that there is a Swamini, and that she love us, and we love her. And this is the beauty. Yes, yeah. thank you. Thank you. I, I think just one last thing, it's one part of me very, very clearly also knows that not a change in the material plane will give this deep happiness. <laughs> but still, these desires somehow pop up inside of me. And um, yeah, so. <laughs> I offer also my desires to her lotus feet. <laughs> so, sorry, Harinam. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, here, he can ask. Here. Uh, and uh, actually, your question is very beautiful. And uh, this is actually that what we learn from Gurudev, what you ask for, isn't it? Can we feel our Swamini? Can we uh, realize this in the, uh, this feeling of a Manjari in this world, even in our hearts? That was, and this is our because of this we 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 go to Vrindavan, isn't it, Mahatmaji? Yes, my dear, I, I feel you're, you're totally right. The, the Manjari has this term, monovistum, Gurudev talked about a few days ago. And this is, I can feel your heart's inner desire. I know exactly what you want. And this is the feeling 
that the Mundries have without this feeling, they couldn't serve to the level that they're able to serve at. They know exactly what Swamini wants, what she needs, what she desires, sometimes before she even knows it. And in this way, they're able to serve at the highest level. And without this, they wouldn't be able to um, engage in their service as professionally as they do. And so this feeling enables them to to serve and the level that that they desire to serve at. And uh, a while ago, we were having a discussion of kind of like oneness with the Mundri and Swamini. And Gurudev shared that the the Mundri is both one of and separate from Swamini. So Mm -hmm. she is one with Swamini in her feelings. She feels exactly as Swamini feels. And in this way, she can anticipate she's already fanning Swamini before Swamini even realizes she needs to be fanned. And also she's separate from, right? If, if they were entirely one, how could the Swam- how could the Mundri possibly serve her? So they are, they're, they are both two and one similar to, to Radha Mohan. The Mundri has her own form so that she's able to serve, but she's one in her feelings so that again, she's able to serve. So everything has been designed, has been constructed for this highest level of service. It's like when you, when you're so thirsty and without saying anything, someone hands you a cup of water. This is this is the Mundri type of service of monovistum, knowing exactly what you want without having to speak it. Mm. This is because of this Gurudev is hammering to us, Siddhasvarup and Ishtadev. Mm. You have to know who you are, and you have to know your Ishtadev. And in the case of us, we are Mandri, and that means exclusively serving Radhika. There is no Krishna and Radhika or Krishna more like the gopis and the sakis. In our case, we are totally fixed on the, on Swamini. And so she can, she know that we are loyal. We are hundred percent loyal. We will never, we are unshakable. Manjaris are really the shadows, like Gurudev said, really the shadows not even sometimes visible, but they are there. We are there. If we need, we are there. And we know everything about her because we are so fixed on her lotus feet. Gopis are, she cannot always, for all, for all situations, she cannot uh, count on the gopis and the sakis. But, on the manjaris, she can count in every moment, in day and night. We are there. We're waiting for the smallest hint, and even if there is no hint, we are there. And this is the, this is the beauty I can feel in that what Gurudev is giving to us. This is such a great mercy. So and yes. slowly we start to to come in, re, in a real relationship we can i can also feel in many of you that you start this this relationship and that you slowly do that we together slowly falling in love with our swamini because of uh, of the, our relationship to gurudev we fell in the, in the feelings isn't it kishori <laughs> Sorry to this. <laughs> yeah, just this is absolute truth. Just now you and Mahatma Ji said, and thank you for Haina Prasadam Ji. This is real practice science. Without asking, we feel others need. For example, Gilde many times says, in the Kirtan time, Mahaprabhu enjoys Kirtan, but new guests come. Then, are you hungry? Do you need prasada? Like this. And in our temple, especially in Vrindava, everywhere is prasada and full of love. Everyone is ready to serve others. 
This is not Shastra. Just living, loving action. This is absolute truth. This is what Manjaris are doing. If we see really Swamini in everyone's heart, we are ready to any circumstance to offer myself, to make anyone happy. This is a real servanthood I want to practice in this beauty. I want to learn from all of you. Thank you so much. You are, all of you are our good example. I'm very happy to associate all of you. This, like a Mahatma and Gora Sundara Prabhu Shea, Bandana Ji, Harinam Ji asking, and we are listening. Everyone is seva. It's not high and low. Everyone is doing seva. Without question, we cannot get these answers, realizations. I respect all of you. You are all expansion of our group. Our Swami. Yeah, thank you so much for all your answers. Like, it's like really touching and really also fulfilling to have this clarification now about the oneness uh, with Swamini and that we like, yeah, like fully feel what she feels. And this is like where really, yes, satisfying to know for me, like what I devote myself to. Yeah. <sighs> Thank you so much. Rati, rati, go.